one has to read this letter, it starts off by making it very clear that it is an effort to seek guidance. But when one goes through the contents, that all the contents are not perhaps within the purview of what oh. this Supreme Judicial Council structured or in place to look at. And the request here is that we support that request for inquiry. And in fact, we not only support that, we want to expand that. Hello and welcome to 20 Minutes. I'm Nadia Naki with you. We have Ahmed Hassan Shah, a seasoned lawyer. And, um, you know, he, he understands uh, the constitution, the law very well. And right now, the reason to have him is uh, the, you know, what has happened after six judges of the Islamabad High Court wrote a letter to the Chief Justice of Pakistan uh, seeking guidance from the Supreme Judicial Council that in cases where um, the judges or their courts are being managed or are being forced or, or they are you know coerced or harassed by intelligence agencies, what should be uh, you know their conduct? Um, after that, we we saw that the Chief Justice had convened a full court and uh, a meeting took place yesterday, but then there was no press release as such as to what was discussed and how. Of course, this issue was deliberated, but what was the outcome has not been told yet. Um, there was a meeting to be held between the Prime Minister of Pakistan and the Chief Justice of Pakistan, along with the Attorney General and the Law Minister, which has taken place. Uh, what is the outcome of the meeting is not out in the public, of course, but yes, this letter has certainly, um, I, I would say it's a huge, huge um, turning point in 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 the judiciaries uh, or in in the recent history of of our judicial system thank you so much emma and shasta for joining us first of all i would like to know very briefly the destination of this letter do you see a problem in that because the supreme judicial council it has been you know under debate that supreme judicial council is for um, you know deciding any sort of misconduct by any judge and taking a decision on that and not on these matters. It's always a pleasure, though this issue is something that is not very comfortable for many, and including myself. It's very painful to talk about these things as a professional who's associated with this uh, profession for you know nearly three decades now. But um, before I start and comment and give you an answer, a couple of cautions that I want to highlight. This is indeed, as you point out, a very serious issue. It is not just a serious issue. It is a serious issue with has or likely to have some very scary consequences. So what I suggest and request all is that this is the time to demonstrate political and social maturity in a way that we ensure in our debate that no particular political party or no particular individual is given the license to spin it for personal advantage or gain. This is my first point. The second is, this is an issue which ought to be discussed at the institutional level, not on focusing or by focusing on particular individuals within or outside the administration of the justice system. So these are the two cautions and I will try and contain myself within these cautions and advise you accordingly. However, having said that, there are still two fundamental questions that need to be answered. Number one, why did this letter get leaked? Now you and I have begun to realize or see as the new normal that the judges, honorable judges are free to write what they may, whosoever they may write to in these cases, the chief justices, but these communications then suddenly come out in the public domain. So I guess the question to be addressed is that dissemination of such communication ought to be considered for the sake of institutional governance. And the second question is, which is now coming to the answer to your question of uh, address, that is this letter a complaint? What is this? Now, if one has to read this letter, it starts off by making it very clear that it is an effort to seek guidance. This is the word, guidance from SJC. But when one goes through the contents, one realizes that all the contents are not perhaps within the purview of what this Supreme Judicial Council 
is yes. or you know structured or in place to look at hence we have heard that there was a, a full court meeting we, we, we don't know i frankly i personally don't know but we, this is what has been reported so that allays a few concerns that nothing is happening this has shaken uh, the system in a way and a full court meeting has been held now we will find out if we do find out that what has been so the answer to the question is that yes not all matters are perceptibly or appear to be within the sdc domain and yes there has been action what precisely we will come to know okay but but in your opinion you see these are this is not some no you know an ordinary citizen coming off with a complaint saying that you know this is how i have been harassed this is you know essentially just i think uh, short of one but the entire islamabad high court saying that you know this is what has happened and you know the kind of examples they have cited the kind of harassment they have given in their letters this is huge actually and it's very serious so what sort of an action do you think can happen is it going to be an open court where all these allegations need to be then given uh, evidence for and then you know a case it, it it shall be decided whether it existed or not because what i see is that you know yes the, i mean it's i would say it's an open secret that you know there is so much but who actually puts uh, manages the court is the question who does it and that if, whether it is an individual a group or a people they need to be held accountable they need to be punished but there has to be a way to that so this is what i'm asking what needs to be done if i were to summarize they have sought guidance on precisely how these matters ought to be dealt with when a judge is to uh, face such a situation or when it comes to the knowledge of a particular judge that a colleague judge or a judge of a subordinate judiciary which is under the supervisory role in this case we talk about islamabad uh, what needs to be done so this is the guidance part of it now one could say that uh, this is a matter on a policy level that has been sought to be addressed and there is even a recommendation that there should be a conference to address it but again this is an in house matter my sense is that the way our judiciary is structured the high courts are independent high courts so this is a matter which ought to have been first resolved from what the contents of this communication say that an effort of that kind was made and only it has been escalated to this level once they they it was non responsive now the origins of this letter are uh, basically it arises out of again it arises out of concerns that have uh, you know come in light of the recent supreme court judgment in the justice sadiqi case yes so this actually and the and the request here is that we support that request for an inquiry or investigation and in fact we not only support that we want to expand that now this is a very strange situation here that before that request has been acted upon by whosoever we have now here uh, six honorable judges supporting that request now we will see what the sjc or the full court opines on it uh, on it but it appears so that there is this consciousness that something will need to be done now i don't think uh, anybody can guess uh, what precisely will be done but one thing is clear that the whole supreme court is now considering this issue and the outcome will be before us in a couple of days no but i need to know ahmed hasan shah sahab that you know because this this was written to the chief justice of pakistan seeking guidance from the sjc Uh, why do you think there was a why, why was it necessary for the prime minister and the chief justice of pakistan to meet now uh, i uh, from what i've heard uh, from reports from your colleagues is that this meeting is not only between the honorable chief justice but uh, another honorable justice perhaps the senior puni judge as well my sense is that this could not have happened without being considered in the full court session yesterday so to say that uh, this is getting you know somewhere out of line I, i do not suspect that because we all know that there was a session yesterday and in right. all fitness whatever is happening in the interim i believe it has to be in line with what was discussed 
so we should not be doubting these actions and expanding the scope of the controversy to areas that we need not this is a time to retain focus on institutional governance institutional strengthening and what we all know as the independence of judiciary Mm, independence of judiciary you're talking about you know this entire uh, since the time this letter has come out into the public domain it looks like and you know there's there are so many people who are commenting on it saying that this looks like it's judiciary versus establishment now and if that is how it is going to be it's not going to be easy because uh, you know as it is we have a lot of political instability and this could get really serious this is like opening up a door you're right the pandora's box has been opened it's a, it is now open it is obviously for now the relevant uh, uh, stakeholders in this case the judicial arm of the state or the organ yeah. of the state as we call it and the executive organ of the state now these are the two organs of the state that are involved now seen in that context who heads the two organs of the state is it unfair for the two heads to meet to resolve this issue or how else is it going to be resolved now absolutely this is a serious issue and this has to be handled with care so my sense is and besides we are like you said we are talking about seasoned professionals here this is not some uh, individual in distress in the far corners of the country who is Uh, written a distress note this is a communication which has been thought out and written by six minds so it will be taken due note of and then all those other minds that are involved within the judicial arm and outside will have to attend to it because this is now now that we have seen this uh, ghost come out of the box so to say it will have to be handled it cannot be Uh, put behind the curtain and this is a test not only for the two organs of the state it is also a test i would say for the sixth pillar or the fourth pillar of the state uh, not the sixth fourth pillar of the state which is the media you so that you have to lend balance to this now yes. it is very e- easy to uh, fuel one mind or approach to this issue preferring one party or to the other but i guess the responsibility on the journalistic size is to look at it from an objective standard so shah saab i want to know this you know certain political parties and in this scenario we see pakistan tehreek e insaf they 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 have been saying it you know they're like see this is what used to happen and xyz and uh, you know this needs to be now looked into similarly in 2018 we saw pmln having such complaints and this is what justice shokat siddiqui's case was about we heard mariam nawaz saheba who is now the chief minister always citing examples of justice shokat siddiqui's case saying that you know he said it out in the open but um, right now it looks like the tables have turned you know sides have changed the modus is the same but what is unfortunate is that that serious concern that courts are being managed that is what the focus should be of these political parties or for that matter for the executive also rather than saying that you know yes it is happening to us right now or the executive is saying no it is not happening to anyone it did happen in 2018 what happened in the past right or wrong or just because it happened in the past should happen again this is not what we are going to get into yeah. what has happened here is serious and there is a difference in the justice siddiqui case we had justice siddiqui take up issue and identify who he thought was behind it now that is why i say i go back to the question that i posed is this a complaint if this is part complaint then it will have to be dealt with separately if it is deemed not to be a complaint it will be dealt separately so there is a merit in the argument that this actually does contain uh, the features of a complaint as well so to that extent it is within the realm of possibilities that parts of it may be taken note of or cognizance of by the sjc and parts of it not they will be taken care of in perhaps Uh, what we have come to know as the 1843 jurisdiction so both 
possibilities uh, to my mind legally speaking exist and they are not mutually uh, exclusive they could concurrently proceed for example on the policy and the inquiry side uh, it could go uh, uh, you know in certain aspects under the 1843 and in certain aspects uh, uh, under the sjc okay it, in fact in the in the justice sadiqi judgment that has been referred to in this this is precisely what uh, the court said that if if we have to look at if we come into the complaint zone then there are there is a follow up action required and then there has to be someone again who is this complaint against so if it is not a judge then sjc has no role to play then we go shift on to the other side under 1843 i am confident that the honorable uh, judges at this superior court are aware of these aspects they were aware of these aspects and the ones to whom this has been written are also aware of these aspects so this is a time to have not to distrust the institution at the moment but to have faith in the institution and say well this is a time and opportunity that collective wisdom will be displayed in an open manner now if that warrants and we've seen in the recent past that uh matters of public importance are live telecast now if if it is uh, to be taken up as a 1843 the court will have to discharge some kind of a uh, burden by saying that why not this be live streamed so these are the issues that the court uh, will have to face and you know we are coming out of a phase we as a country we are in and out of chaos uh, but uh, i have always said that we have to believe in this country we have to we have to have some semblance of the system that we operate in and only then we will be able to improve it just to say no, no shutting everything going at arm in arm against everybody individuals that is not uh, uh, respectfully my way of thinking yes yeah, I mean, yes and because you know the way it has now come out in the public this requires some sort of action as we as we said in the uh, you know beginning but what i would like to see or what others would like to see is that if this is a problem because those six judges of course are of sound minds and that's why they are writing a letter and they are you know trying it's like a whistle blow they're telling you that you know this is what happens this is what happens there was one instance this happened there was another instance that happened and this is how they are being harassed they are being you know the courts are being managed which is against of course the very core of the justice system of providing um independent uh, you know judiciary which after reading this letter of course one one can easily say that you know it's been under pressure so i think it's time to push back those forces who have exerted pressure but for that i always believe that you know they have to be taken to task whoever it may be without yes. that we, we we are not moving forward yes absolutely in the justice sadiqi case also a lot of emphasis has been placed on the due process so yes. when we talk about legal action legal proceedings whosoever be the uh, individual against whom that is that individual has certain rights so in our uh, moment of emotion and high uh, uh, you know sensitivity we will never lose sight of what are the constitutional bearings now in this whole matter i i have always um, prided myself to be a pakistani and have stuck it out here regardless of how down allegedly under the spiral this country has gone over the past 30 40 50 70 years so one of the things is that you and i remain loyal to the state of pakistan and the loyalty to the state of pakistan means that the state of pakistan ought to stand on its own feet in an honorable and dignified manner what this has done is it has shaken uh, the structures that we have for ourselves established in the constitution and now it is the time for the people who are responsible at the head of these organs to come up look beyond look pakistan and then build they and re restructure their uh, organs so that the public faith in these organs of the state is restored it is a tough ask but there is no other way forward you are absolutely right Uh, you know, uh, there is no way forward. It's a tough ask. It has to be done. I would want uh, want to know that. Does it still? I mean, would you 
believe in this. Uh, there are certain people from the current uh, setup, as in the government, because of the polarization. I, I, you know, it could be the reason. But they say, um, I, I can't name them, but these are like closed door discussions that these are the judges who have in the recent past given a lot of relief to the former Prime Minister Imran Khan. And hence, this is all planned what has happened. Well, I, I, I can't say or I can tell you from my personal experience, I have, I have appeared before uh, some of them in cases that have been so-called against the part party and they have rendered decisions so-called against the party. So I think this is this is a path that we need not tread. Right. Uh, because uh, like I said, the focus here is simple. The, we need to secure an independent judiciary. People who have corroded that concept need to take a step back. And and as has been said in the Justice Siddiqui case, I, I, if I recall correctly, when a judge, in, in fact, in this case, if I correctly recall, there's a statement to the effect that when Justice Siddiqui made uh, an allegation, a counter position was presented by another honorable, seen more senior judge. So they said, well, who, just because you are more senior or you are at a higher pedestal, does it mean that you are saying the truth? So we will not get into this debate. We will have to go and see that these allegations have come forth and now they need to be looked at and mechanisms in place need to be put in place that no such concern or complaint is raised in future. There is no effective mechanism put in place to undermine the independence of judiciary. And like you said, yes, if heads have to roll, heads have to roll. Yes, and let's see how these heads are to roll and what is going to happen. But yes, as we say, this is something very serious and what kind of action is now going to come out after a full court meeting was convened? The Prime Minister and the Chief Justice of Pakistan have met. <clears throat> News is that, you know, probably there may be another full court meeting. And then it's going to be, there's going to be some sort of action that will be given to us after the deliberations are done. But thank you so much, Emma Hassan Shah, for being with us uh, on 20 Minutes. That's now. Take care.